you were to drive down Highway 52 through Boron, California, you'd probably find a man who keeps the highway cleaner than he does himself. Around here, he's known as Walking George. Now, at first sight, Walking George would look like a bum. At second sight, he would also look like a bum. Like every man, though, Walking George has a dream. I would say for years, I probably have the same uh, dream or quest or ultimate goal that the majority of men have, and that is the seeking out of feminine beauty and pulchritude. To pick up a beautiful woman, or any woman, seems like an unusual quest for this man who for over 20 years has been picking up garbage. But Walking George is an unusual man. Most of the stuff that Walking George picks up out on the highway and back here in the desert, he brings over to this place. As a matter of fact, this is his place. And this is where he sleeps. Obviously, it's not a waterbed, except during the rainy season. The first thing we ask Walking George is why he lives like this. Uh, I would say that the reasons are 70% um, sentimental because um, of uh, old, my love of the old camp area, because that's where I started out, sort of like an animal returning to its native lair. When you were a young boy, did you ever imagine that you would grow up to be living in a place like this? No, I didn't, um, because um, I was brought up, uh, you might say, like little Lord Fauntleroy, very prim and proper, absolutely no imagination, no uh, colorfulness, uh, no independent thoughts of my own. Do you have a job? Do I have a job? At the Borax Company, I am a, a advanced control chemist. Walking George has been working at U.S. Borax almost as long as he's been picking up garbage. Since he has an income, we asked someone who knows him well, the Reverend Dick Seymour of the Boron First Baptist Church, why Walking George would live in a home that somebody else couldn't tell from a hole in the ground. Things like housing and other things that people value so much, what the Joneses think and clothes and all the rest of it don't matter to him. If you had a child, George, would you want your child to live like this? Oh, no. No, I would live properly then. I would have a uh, house down at Borat. In a way, though, Walking George does have kids. The children of many of the people in this area take piano lessons from George in exchange for feeding him his one meal a day. And once a month, those parents and those children in a town that you think would be more interested in hearing Rhinestone Cowboy or Johnny Cash flock to the monthly church concert to hear Walking George play Beethoven. So this will be a fiery prelude to the um, third act of uh, Lohengrin. And my only piano teacher was my mother. My first musical consciousness came through her. I'm an only child. Uh, my father was a uh, retired captain in the Marine Corps, completely unlike me. Uh, I'm not military at all. Walking George's life in Boron is unique enough in itself, but there's still another side to Walking George, his dream, the stuff that Frank Capra movies were made of. So to pursue that dream, once a month or so, Walking George packs his one suit into his one suitcase and buys a round-trip bus ticket to Los Angeles. That's a one-way ticket, Mojave to Los Angeles. That'll be $6.70. On the way to Los Angeles, we asked Walking George if he'd ever been married. I don't think I've ever been really close to marriage, no. I have never lacked for a female companionship. We asked him if he ever brought any of his female companions to his home, and he said yes. Those he brought home, he said, are no longer his female companions. But the dream he is pursuing in Los Angeles, he says, is different. Her name is Valerie. And Walking George left his place with his suitcase to go to her place. My current lady friend, Valerie, she is a wonderfully open-minded person, and that she uh, welcomes and uh, likes uh, uh, unusual and independent ideas away from the beaten path. She, just, she doesn't like stereotyped, uh, just following the herd, and she appreciates uh, the differences and variegation, same as I do. Hi, George. How's the trip? Oh, wonderful. How's everything? How are you? 
the reason I come down to see Valerie is because to me she is the absolute personification of my personal ideal of attractive young photogenic female. Um, I guess that's why we get along so great together is we both are very open to everything in the world and we love life. And I think that's why we get along really well. <laughs> Valerie, do you date other men? Oh, I date other men, sure. But George is, um, as I say, we're not involved romantically, but we are very, very close and the greatest friends, and I'm sure we will be until one of us dies. <laughs> Reverend Dick, once every couple of weeks, walking George looks forward to going into Los Angeles, and it's his fortnightly bath also. If he looks forward to going to town and having that bath, do some of the people in Boron look forward to his going to Los Angeles? I don't think it's quite as desperate as that, but uh, I think everybody knows George and just kind of takes him as he is. On his special night out, Walking George treats himself and Valerie to the finest restaurants in Los Angeles, Ma Maison, L'Hermitage, Scandia. But tonight, it's Benny Hanna. My idea of a great evening out would be a combination of the following activities. First, a wonderful pre-dinner cocktail hour or attitude adjustment hour. Then a gourmet meal with all sorts of appetizers, main courses with possibly maybe three or four different desserts if you had room enough for them. And go to either the uh, theater district or an opera house. And after that, join the uh, after theater crowd and stay there until 2 a.m. or closing time, just uh, holding a drink and sipping it and looking out the window at the lights of the great city. The next morning, walking George packs his one suit in his one suitcase and returns to his life in Boron. And I keep the money in circulation and use it up now because, consider this, for every dollar that anybody saves at the beginning of a given year, at the end of that year, its value may have increased by 5% interest, but decreased by 10 or 12% inflation. So anybody's a fool that saves it. Before leaving Walking George, we asked him if he had still another dream. I would like to have the honor of playing the piano part of Robert Schumann's A minor piano concerto with the Los Angeles Philharmonic Orchestra. Now, when we first heard Walking George describe his dream girl, who would have dreamt he had Valerie? And when he says his big dream is to spend one night playing with the Los Angeles Philharmonic, who knows? I think that I could uh, describe myself somewhat as uh, Patton was uh, analyzed by the German general staff as a a 16th century man cast adrift in the 20th.